Paul, today we're here at Mazak in Worcester and this is a true multitasking uh, machine tool, HQR 250MSY. Tell us about the machine. Really interesting concept of machine because people look at a, a twin turret and a twin spindle machine as predominantly high volume manufacturing. And it is, don't, don't get me wrong, this machine is ideal for those long running uh, long running jobs, unmanned. But I also, well I spoke to Brian Edmondson earlier and there's going to be a video coming to the channel soon with him about tackling lower volumes with this machine and the machine is capable of doing lower volumes and, and what was interesting is how he said how they um, take a customer's application and they don't necessarily ask about the volume to start with they ask or look at the complexity of it because this machine is obviously so capable. I think it's a similar argument to a sliding head machine clearly this isn't a sliding head machine but the perception was I need to be doing thousands on the sliding head we go places they're doing 20, 30 components, very complicated components, but 20 or 30 uh, off. And I see this in a similar category to that. It, it is, and uh, what's, what's really great as well, you've got an 80 mil bar capacity, mm. um, not just on the, on the front spindle, but on the, the back spindle as well. So you're opening up to, to new markets. I mean, in my days of selling machine tools, we used to really go maximum twin spindle, twin tire, it was, it was about 65 mil bar. And you did get those, um, companies that needed to go slightly bigger and this machine will fit perfectly I mean 35 horsepower motors equal front and back quite something. So that's the thing for me the fact you can bar feed an 80 mil bar feeder plus you can have a robot automation should you wish to go bigger and the sheer amount of tools you can get on the machine. Well yeah you've got, you got double point indexing so you've got two 12 station turrets but you can go up to 24. These machines are also about, if you are talking high volume, I know we say low and high volume, if you are talking high volume, you're talking about speed now. And this machine has a 0.2 indexing time on these turrets as well. And that's quite something when you look at the size of that turret. I mean, they're not small, are they? They're, they're, they're quite big. Exactly, fast, rigid. So it's, I think it's about 15 tonne in weight, uh, rapids of 36 uh, metres a minute. And the other thing for me, we're not talking sub-spindle here, that's very important. You've essentially got two machines in one. Yeah, you have. Um, and you're not talking sub-spindle, you're talking a twin spindle, as we said. 235 um, horsepower motors front and back. So lots of power as well as speed. A new development on this machine as well is the extended Y-axis. You've now got um, 100 mil, not just on the top turret, but on the bottom turret as well. And by having that Y-axis really does mean that you've got, once again, more flexibility. Another point to mention as well, this is the world's fastest uh, CNC control, as Mazak claim. And this can chew through a whopping, would you believe, 540 metres a minute of code. I mean, that is something, isn't it? That's quite something. Yeah, incredible. You know, it's... And that's where you get, that's where you, where you, where you get your gains with this type of machine. I, I call them free wins. You haven't got to do anything to get that, have you? Those extra seconds you gain, they're for free. Yeah, and I mean, if, if this control you always try and look at the weakest point. What is the weakest point of a machine as well? And this control certainly isn't it because it, you know, there's nothing you could make on that hardware that this software couldn't drive. And that's the, uh, the incredible aspect. And I think that's why this, this technology can save seconds on, on thousands of parts, which, which turns into hours. The final one for me, uh, I think I've got an answer, but who's gonna look to buy a machine like this? Clearly it's not an entry level machine. It's a true multitasking premium machine. Yeah, um, I, well, it, we look at a lot of sliding head technology and we look how the sliding head market has advanced. The machines are bigger, they're heavier, bigger bar capacity, more power. And you start to think, well, is that eroding this market? Is that, is that taking business away from the twin turret machine? Well, in some instances, if the machine was smaller, it may, but not really when you get to this level, when you get to the 80 mil bar diameter. Um, Brian was telling me about one of his customers that was machining um, an Inconel component um, you know, a, a large, a large bar diameter on, on Inconel. And that's something where these machines really, um, you know, come into their own. I think in answer to your question, high volumes is one. High volumes, reduced cycle times, automation, unmanned run. The second is, is complex parts, regardless of volumes. And that can be yeah. all kinds of industries. And you mentioned side heads. And I, I, I genuinely think that's a good point. You go to a lot of places and they're pretty much exclusively sliding ahead lathes. I wonder how many inquiries do they decline because they only go up to maximum of what, 42, maybe even 45 millimetres. And, and, there, and there's a good reason to look at a machine like this. If you are, if that is happening to you, if you're a, a machinist and you, you're a sliding head shop and, and you are getting requests for quotes for 
parts that are 65 mil bar diameter, 70 mil, uh, mil bar diameter, and you're turning them away, well, you've got a, a workhorse here which uh, reliably could machine those, those components, I believe. Yeah, for sure. So, and this machine, incidentally, uh, is X stock. So get in touch with Mazak for more information on the HQR 250 MSY.